Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is Maki Vogue slash EV Explored. We're here with Dan from Autel. We've done videos with him before, but we're here at CES 2025. We're going to look at their entire product range. So let's go. So Dan, go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience. I know they've seen you before, but yeah, let's get to know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an awesome show this year. Uh, so I'm Dan Larson with Autel Energy, uh, Senior Solutions Engineer. And what we want to do today is sort of take a look at your portfolio of stuff and really focus on like where each of your chargers fit in the ecosystem that's EV charging. So this yeah. is we'll, we'll start here, I guess. Um, this is your level two charger, but it has some options here we want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, so this is our AC Pro, and uh, this is this was newly launched, so it wasn't here at last year's show. So this is a 19.2 kilowatt, 80 amp AC charger, obviously single port, um, but this one supports a lot of the protocols that didn't exist when our previous AC charger was launched. So okay, OCPP 2.0, ISO 15118. And you know, obviously, the full advertising screen and everything on this. So one plug and charge. Yeah, plug and charge. Plug and charge on a on an EV level two charger, which is something that's pretty new to the industry. Correct. Yeah, our, I mean, our AC Ultra uh, has supported you know 15118, but that's a dual port 19.2 kilowatt. Our original commercial AC charger that was single port, that one did not support it because it was a different chipset and yeah. everything. So. This new one fully supports the 15118 plug and charge. And, and what that means is, is like, of course, like if you have a home charger, it's basically plug and charge. But the idea is like if you have a, an account, you can literally just plug in and your car will start charging if everything's set up on the car side as well as payment side. And, and now the charger side, that part is done. Exactly. Yeah. So with, with the 15118 plug and charge, you actually ID the vehicle based on the MAC address of the vehicle. And then there's a third party, um, you know, kind of software layer on top of it that authorizes uh, the payment transaction to just take place automatically um, once it's set up on the vehicle side. So it's it's really going to eliminate the need for credit card readers for multiple different apps on your phone. Uh, once plug and charge is widely accepted by all the auto OEMs as well as all the EV charger manufacturers, it's going to make yeah. uh, the the driver experience so much better. Yeah, I mean, we have it in our Maki -E, like with. EA Tesla superchargers and it's like the more the merrier like the the more plug and charge situations we have the better exactly yeah not all the OEMs have it opened up yet uh, automotive OEMs but uh, Ford has obviously been one of the early adopters of plug and charge and they yeah. really nailed it and um, you know Tesla's always had it uh, but it's you know only with their supercharger network so you know it's really time that all the OEMs really start adopting it for all the vehicles yeah, it feels like we're going into the next phase of EV charging. Like everybody's starting to finally get on the same page. We're starting to uh, get the, the the same connector. I know this has J1772, but as we go through, we'll talk about the the J3400 adapter, uh, not adapter, connector. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this you know the, this one obviously has the J1772, but uh, this AC Pro model can be ordered with the uh, NACS J3400 cool. as well. Anything else, or should we move on to the next one? Uh, yeah. So actually, the the other items on this board is uh, oh yeah. So this is our Autel Smart Box, and this is going to be utilized with uh, CT clamps. And this is ideal for let's say it's like a really old building that you install this charger, or maybe you have five chargers all sharing power with the rest of the building, and maybe the existing infrastructure in the building can't fully supply all the chargers at the same time, as well as all the other loads in the building, like yeah. the AC compressor and um, you know, it's really common with like apartment buildings and that type of thing. So, um, so with this, you can actually monitor the other loads in the building. So let's say the AC kicks on or somebody's running their electric dryer. Now there might not be enough power remaining to give the full 19.2 kilowatts right. to the vehicles, but it'll actually, you know, throttle down the EV charger as other loads kick on. But then as those kick off, now the charger can, you know, output the full capability again. So really nice solution with this. Um, and then this is going to be our kiosk solution. So with this, you can actually pair this with multiple AC chargers. So let's say it's a parking ramp, very similar to how you would pay at a parking kiosk when you park at an outside parking lot. Um, you can plug in, you know, multiple, multiple vehicles, and then you just come through to this kiosk, you select which charger you used. This communicates to the chargers via OCPI. Uh, so you basically just select the charger, and then you pay on this, and then it's going to authorize the session on the charger itself. So it separates it from like being on the charger, so you can have 
like five or six of them connected to one payment system. Exactly. Simplifies it, reducing cost. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, reduces hardware costs because, you know, if you have, let's say, eight chargers and each charger has a point of sale terminal on it, yeah. you know, the point of sale terminals aren't necessarily cheap either. So it just adds to the overall cost of deploying that solution. So it's really nice to just, you have the chargers and then you have one payment terminal functions as a kiosk for the rest of them. Makes a lot of sense. Cool. Yep. Yeah, let's move on to maybe this back section here. We'll go past this nicely wrapped blazer. Yes. <laughs> I know you guys are a big fan of the blazers and uh, I am too. It's an awesome, awesome vehicle. Um, so maybe cover this one. Uh, this one obviously is not powered on. This is our mobile DC compact, so. Oh, that's very, very neat. I like that. At 40 kilowatts in a mobile package. Absolutely. Yeah, and this one, you know, the mobile, it's got the Hubble uh, three-phase plug on there. So we have a lot of uh, fleets that are using this. Um, school bus fleets, medium heavy duty yeah. trucks where it's really large vehicles and maybe they're parked inside of a warehouse and that warehouse has these Hubble three-phase outlets throughout the warehouse. So then that way they don't have to jockey the vehicles around to a charger that's fixed in one spot. Right. They can wheel the charger over plug it into that outlet, ch charge that school bus, for example, and then wheel yeah. it over to the next one. So really nice mobile solution for that. And I imagine it could also be useful like when they're in a depot getting maintenance done, they have like two uh, EV buses and a bunch of other like gas ones. They don't have to like, oh, this, they have to wait for the bay that has the EV charger. They move the EV charger to the bay that the EV's in, so. Exactly. Our DC Fast, I know that we covered this in the video last year. Yeah. But uh, what we didn't have at that time was the NAX plug. So um, we have issued the NAX plug as an option for the DC Fast. So you can mix and match as these are configured and ordered. So you can have dual CCS, dual NAX, or any combination in between. So. A lot of popularity with this one. We've, uh, we've got over a thousand of these deployed throughout North America already at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, really tried and true solution for the market. And I, and I, I would think you guys are sort of seeing like uh, what the trends are with charging companies and like what they are interested in and which specifically which plug they're interested in. Exactly. Are you seeing a big shift to J3400 yet or is it still split? Um, I would say it's becoming much more, uh, more, much more even as far as the request for both. Um, you know, I think that as the market continues to evolve, you know, auto OEMs are, a lot of them haven't released their vehicles that are going to have the J3400 port. So um, it's still probably like 75% that are ordered with CCS and maybe 25% are NAX at this point. But, you know, we do have the retrofit kits available for these too. So that way, if you ordered the charger today with dual CCS ports, um, you know, a year from now, maybe you have a lot more Tesla drivers coming to the area. So then you don't have to replace the whole charger. It's just a retrofit kit. You get a one port and then see, you know, what the actual utilization is between both. Yeah. And then maybe at a later time, maybe you actually do want to retrofit the other side too. So. And this is uh, 240 kilowatts, correct? And is, is it both 240 or is it 240 and then if the boat plugged in, it splits at 120? Uh, it splits at 120, 120. Um, so it, it actually can be configured anywhere from 60 all the way up to 240 kilowatts oh, okay. in any 20 kilowatt increment with this charger. So um, yeah, it just depends on how you have it configured. But if you do the full 240, um, then yeah, it'll do 240 to one car. Or if a second car plugs in, then it's going to be 120, 120 split. And being able to start at 60 kilowatts, it just gives like a business customer, the, the flexibility of like saving some money, seeing how it goes. And then like, if you start having more demand for faster charging, then you can, you can upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, another common thing that, you know, people deploying these run into is that, you know, let's say today you talk to your utility company, they might say, um, you know, today you can only do two of these at hundred kilowatts, you right. know, given the current transformer to the site. Um, but they might want to 240 chargers at the site yeah. um but they you know the power company just can't supply that much power right now and there's a lot of uh like transformer shortages and that type of yeah thing. and so you know the solution is that you can buy this today at let's say 100 kilowatts and you could you know install two of the chargers at 100 and then a year from now once the utility company is able to upgrade that transformer you don't have to replace the charger at that point it's just a matter yeah. of installing the additional power modules and you know some firmware updates and relabeling at that point but it's you know you don't have to replace 
the charger. It's just basically upgrading your existing one, and then it's going to output the full 240. In the power requirements, transformer shortage seems to be huge because, like, we we know there's some chargers like in our area that they've been sitting there for two years waiting apparently for transformers to get installed. So I yeah. I I'd rather have any fast charging and then upgrade later. So I I, I like that as the Very true. end user drivers. Like just get something there upgrade later instead of just waiting for two years. So that's pretty cool. My hand did not shrink. <laughs> this connector is really massive. This is your, your megawatt charger. Absolutely. Yeah, so this is the this is a megawatt charging dispenser. Uh, so this would be 1,440 kilowatts. Wow. Um, you know, it obviously would be an external power cabinet. Uh, we don't have the power cabinet at the show today just due to it's, space requirements. And who wants to look at a box, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, a lot of interest in these, uh, especially from fleets, heavy duty vehicles, um, you know, uh, farm machinery, mining equipment. Um, a lot of those are the ones that are going to be going to the megawatt charging. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of interest in this one. And um, it's really nice, thin profile dispenser. Obviously, a lot of the fleets, they don't necessarily want the large display. So, we got the nice, you know, compact display. And um, yeah, so the, the actual. Uh, power cabinet configuration can be, it'll be basically 480 kilowatt power cabinets, cabinets linked together. So three of those linked together would be that full 1440. Right, yeah. But if you wanted to just do two of them, then it would be 960 kilowatts. Uh, so it just depends on power available, availability to the site, as well as, um, you know, the actual vehicles that are going to be accepting the MCS initially and what yeah. are they capable of taking. And then you kind of configure the power cabinet from there. So as we're talking about with fleets and doing this type of charging, I imagine like this is for people that want to get their fleet back on the road quickly, but something like a school bus, they they may not want to necessarily go with the expense of this because it's like they can just charge overnight. Exactly. So it's sort of like meeting like the needs of the customer as well as sort of like, so we were sort of talking about offline. It's like not everybody needs 300 miles of range per day. Not everybody needs megawatt charging. So yeah, I mean, I. I could use it every once in a while, but <laughs> yeah. most of the time I'm good with, you know, 150 kilowatts. Yeah, it's really going to be ideal for like the long haul trucking um, yeah. and, you know, the industrial mining equipment, things like that, where it's really large vehicles with large battery packs. Yeah. And they're going to, you know, anytime the vehicle is not in use, then that's costing money. You know, they're not making money basically. Yeah. So that's going to be the real use case for megawatt charging, in my opinion. So this almost looks like a, a, a DC fast charger, but it's basically just a level two. Um, and what situations are you finding this and, and what are the specs on this one? Yeah, so this is a dual 19.2 kilowatt AC charger. So it'll actually do, if you supply it with the two separate power feeds, it'll actually do 19.2 yeah. on each port at the same time. Oh, that's good. Eight, 80 amps. So, you know, like this is a common configuration where, you know, this is the charger body itself. This is the pedestal, which is, you know, you would need this if it's gonna be floor mounted. Um, and then we've got cable management, so we've got many yeah. accessory options. Uh, point of sale is obviously optional on this one too, uh, but it's really ideal for workplace, um, even restaurants, retail, places yeah. where people are in site like maybe two to eight hours. Um, they don't need like the fastest charger in the world, but they, you know, they're going to be on site for a little time. Yeah. They want to be able to plug in, add some range to their vehicle before they get back on the road. And what I really like about this is because like, as we're getting into Silverados and Hummers and these these vehicles, they have like way bigger battery packs. Yep. Like the the old school, you know, six kilowatt uh, charger that you're you're using is not going to be adequate. This will actually get you pretty pretty far down the road. Yeah, and what we're seeing is that you know as battery sizes increase on the vehicle side, and now the auto OEMs are also upping the size of the onboard charger yeah, as far as AC acceptance rate. So it used to be that you know. 9 to 11 kilowatts was most common on the onboard charger acceptance rate of most cars but now we're getting up closer to that 14 to you know even the 19.2 kilowatt range so there's going to be a lot more vehicles that are able to accept the full 19.2 yeah. kilowatts from ac charging you know today as well as into the future as well and i think that's important to point out is like if i plug my mach -E into this i'm not going to get any real extra benefit because i my onboard charger is not capable of taking that much power exactly but if you plug in a Silverado or something like that, you're going to get a lot of a lot more range than than we can get in our Mach-E. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yep, so this is, yeah, really an awesome solution. And this one also is, does support the plug and charge. This was our first charger, first AC charger with plug and charge. Then we covered the AC Pro as well. But, um, you know, this moving forward, everything supports uh, 1511A and OCPP 2.0. And now we're over here, this is DC high power. So now we're getting more power here. I mean, not like the megawatt, but for, <laughs> for, for our car, this is getting up there. Yeah, yeah, this one is really ideal for um, high utilization, fast charging of passenger vehicles um, or fleet vehicles, anything with you know CCS connectors, but really fast charging. So with this, we can go up to 640 kilowatts in the power cabinet. Um, you can mount, one to four dispensers per power cabinet. Okay. So, you know, each dispenser has dual ports. So you could go up to eight ports sharing power from that one 640 cabinet. That would enable like a fleet to do eight vehicles at 80 kilowatts all at the same time. Um, this is also the most common configuration for a lot of the Nevi sites that our customers are deploying right. uh, chargers with. So then they'll do two dispensers um, with 640 kilowatts in the power cabinet. That would be 160 kilowatts per port. Uh, that's Medium, able to minimal. supply. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this one, you know, it's got the integrated cable management. Uh, we can do air cooled or liquid cooled cables on these. Uh, we've got the push buttons. We've got, you know, the full Android screen on here as well. All that content on the screen can be customized. So uh, really awesome distributed DC setup with this one. And flexible. And very flexible. For those of you that stuck around, now we're in front of something new. Like this is one we have not seen on this channel before. This was just announced today or at the show, right? Absolutely. Yeah, this is our brand new DH480. So um, this we are unveiling at the show this year. Uh, this is really completing our DC charger lineup. So, you know, we've got the distributed DC setup with the DC high power. We've had an all-in-one DC solution with our DC fast up to 240 kilowatts. Um, but, you know, a lot of people are wanting even higher power out of an yeah. all-in-one charger. So you can do, you can start at 240 kilowatts, you can go all the way up to 480 on this one um, in 40 kilowatt power module increments with this. So we can do two ports. Uh, you can also do a total of four ports with another screen and two more connectors on the back side. And that's ideal for like a parking space where you can put this between uh, to service four parking spots, mm -hmm. uh, you know, back to back in a, in a parking lot. So really awesome solution with this one. Um, we, you know, we, we make everything in house. So, you know, we're going up to the 40 kilowatt power modules on this, but then also even the internals, uh, the, the matrixing module inside, we can now distribute that power in 40 kilowatt increments to a specific port. So, um, really awesome. And this is really what the industry has been wanting and needing for a while. And I think that we're a lot the first, of power. Yeah. First ones with, you know, this power capability at this affordable price and with as much flexibility on the on the and a too. sort of unique power uh, cable management system here too. It is, yeah, yeah. I mean, these are these are really nice as far as you know they flex all the way out uh, as you plug it into a vehicle. So um, yeah, really nice, and these will be uh, good for high utilization as well. This one's I'm going to be punny. This one's flexible in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, congratulations on the the new product. Um, I know that. There's a lot of our viewers that, you know, they're getting cars that can take more and more power. So this is awesome to see. And uh, exactly. it's, it's really neat to see the, basically the, the, the versatility and the flexibility with the, the different connectors. So it looks like it's gonna be a good year. Yeah, yeah, you know, as, as the acceptance rate with DC charging on vehicles continues going up, you know, we're getting up into that 350 kilowatt range that some yeah. vehicles are able to take. And so, um, you know, obviously everybody wants to be able to charge up as quickly as possible. And this is really an awesome solution for it. I'm excited. I'm excited to one day have a car that can get close to that. <laughs> but, but right now we don't have that. But I, I love the future proof uh proofing that you're doing here so yep. thank you for the the booth tour um as always it's always good to see you guys at, at these uh ces as well as other auto shows and uh hopefully your ces is really really good and 2025 is really really good for ev charging <laughs> yeah it's been an awesome show so far and uh yeah thank you guys for stopping by all right thanks all right